Hi everybody, Patrick here from EngineeringShot.com and ElectronicLessons.com. This will be the final section in our uh, Electronic Learning Board tutorial blocks. Uh, this will be broken up over two videos. This is our sensor block. So we're first going to talk about our LDR. It's a light dependent resistor. It changes resistance based on how much light is hitting it. In higher light, this specific LDR has a much lower resistance and in darkness, a much higher resistance. This is a fixed 10k ohm resistor. So the voltage we see here, this resistor divider, will vary completely based on what's hit, uh, on the state of our LDR, our light dependent resistor. So I'll actually show you that in a few minutes on the learning board. Um, and uh, we'll do some calculations in a minute just to show you how we can determine the, you know, how much, uh, how much voltage will be here. We'll actually connect it into a comparator on our main board. Now, if you haven't seen our other tutorial videos, I highly suggest looking at it, looking at them, especially our comparators video. I'll link that below. That also talks more about voltage dividers. Anyhow, so at our sense, we will see a variable voltage between five volts and zero volts. Obviously, it'll be but between likely 1 and 4.5 volts calculations coming in a minute. Now there's also a line on the board that allows for you to couple little AC signals through a DC blocking coupling capacitor. It's a couple. It's, it's, it's a 0.1 microfarad ceramic capacitor. And what that does is when the LDR senses a change in light, a very fast change of light, the voltage here might not change very fast. It will change. But what we can do is we can couple a AC, little AC signal across here, uh, blocking out all of the DC. So we just see a very low voltage spike along here. We can amplify that, and that goes to our AC pin. I labeled it AC because it's, it's DC blocked. So let's, uh, let's do some calculations. To articulate what I was saying before, imagine this is the zero volt line. There is a, you know, a variable voltage here, but on this side, of the capacitor blocks the DC component. So we get zero volts most of the time, but when there's a quick change in light, what we can do is we can amplify a little spike that we'll see on the AC line past the DC blocking capacitor. And that little spike, we can do so much with that little spike, and we're going to be using that a heck of a lot in a lot of our projects uh, for a lot of different sensors. But that aside, I digress, let's go back to this. So, we've got a fixed resistor, 10K, and let's say that, that a lot of light is hitting the LDR, and that the resistance of the LDR is 1K. Our division voltage, or divider voltage right here, equals VCC, 5 volts, divided by resistance total, which is uh, RA plus RB. Multiply that value times 1K, RB, as you can see here, 5 divided by 10 plus 1 is 11K, times 1K, which is RB, and that's what the voltage we will see at this point. So that's, this is basically saying that 4.5 volts is being dropped across, across our 10K resistor, and 0 0.45 volts is being, is to be, has yet to be dropped along our LDR, which is why we see it right on the sense line. Now, again, we can feed this voltage into a comparator, uh, and uh, we can do a lot more with it. Um, we will get to that a little bit later. But, Let's do another discount. Let's do another uh, calculation. Let's say that this is 100k in pure darkness. Why don't you pause it right now and try to determine if this value was 100k, what would our division voltage be? I hope you got 4.54 volts. That's basically saying that 0.5 volts is being dropped along our 10k ohm resistor. 4.54 volts left to be dropped along the LDR, which is what we see at the V div, the v -div point. So, basically what we can do is you can set up this circuit and you can put a multimeter uh, negative to ground, positive to here, and you can experiment to see what voltage, or you can even do a resistance check along that in different lights. You can check how much resistance, you can uh, check how much voltage we see at the V-div point. We'll actually be doing that on our board in a little in a, in a minute. Okay, so let's say this is fixed. These components are fixed and they're on the board. These are too, but we have our our uh, sensor network set up so that we can easily change this sensor to something else. How about we do a microphone? What we actually have on the board is a jumper, a three-pin jumper that allows for us to change between the vibration sensor, the microphone, and the LDR. And what we have to do is connect it. So in this case, we put the jumper here, completing the circuit. If we wanted our 
LDR, we would just we would we would put the jumper here, and that would complete our circuit. So this means that the LDR has because it's not connected to ground, it's not a part of the circuit anymore. It, it's not causing any interference along here. So right now we've basically got a 10k ohm resistor protecting a little electret microphone connected to ground. Now that, that 10k ohm resistor is still very much needed to protect the mic. Otherwise, we'd be trying to couple to the 5 volt line. That's not that doesn't make any sense. So, right now, basically for this circuit, the sense output is useless. We don't want to we don't need it for the circuit. It's not going to change much. It's just going to be it's 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 not used. Leave it alone. This is what we want. When you speak into the mic, there is a there is a variability on the line because this is essentially like almost like a little transistor. It turns on a little bit, a little, you know, a bit based on the audio signal it captures. Now it's very, very, very small. And we're going to couple that along our AC line to be amplified. We're going to make an audio amplifier to this later on. We're going to use our mic for clap circuits. Clap on, clap off. Clap, clap on, clap off. Clap, clap off, sorry. We're going to use the microphone for a lot of things. So basically this on the, on the DC coupled, or AC, yeah, D, the AC coupled portion of the line we're going to see a very, very small uh, audio signal. So that's basically what we've got here, very, very simple audio, uh, uh, audio, audio detector. So what we could do is we can amplify that, put it through our speaker, and we would hear our voice amplified. Now that's pretty neat, huh? That's how you, you, do, you make a microphone circuit. Very simple. Microphone, 10 k ohm resistor, 0 0.1 microfarad, uh, electro, uh, it doesn't have to be that value, but ceramic capacitor, uh, 10 k ohm pull down, and this is what you'll get. You'll couple your audio, say, your, your, you'll couple the audio to be reamplified elsewhere, or to do other things with it. This is very important. We're going to plug this into, into an amplifier a little bit later. So, let's talk about the vibration sensor. The vibration sensor. Very neat. I like this one. We're going to take your jumper off the mic and connect it to our vibration uh, connector. So now these two have no effect on the circuit and the vibration the vibration detector or vi vibration sensor is, is part of the circuit now. 10k ohm to vibration to ground. Now the vibration sensor can be used for both with both sense and AC outputs. The neat thing thing is is it's like a switch. I've got a little chart here. This is 0 volts. This is a uh, 5 volts or VCC and this is time. So in the case where there's no vibration, the sense line will read 5 volts because think that this is just essentially just a way to shunt that to ground because uh, and when, when, the vib when the vibration happens right here, the voltage will sink to 0 volts and go back up and go back down and up until the vibration stops. It'll go back to 5 volts because it's basically every time you flick it, it this switch turns on and off uh, like based on, on how much vibration there is. So that's why there's a bunch of spikes here. So that can be used uh, on our transistor switch, if we'd like, uh, for our actuators. Um, but we will be using the vibration sensor for an earthquake detector, uh, uh, earthquake detector project. Anyhow, you can also use it on the sense line. You can couple little signals to be reamplified. The harder you shake, the bigger the amplitude will be. So we'll feed that into into, into a uh, an amplifier as well, an op amp amplifier. So before we actually start doing some fun things on the board, what I want to talk about quickly is the IR sensor. Well, after we're done talking about the IR sensor, uh, I'm going to stop the video. We're going to put it I'll put this all. Uh, we're going to connect some of these together on the project board, uh, and then I'm going to end the video and do one more video on the reed switch and PIR sensor. This is our infrared detector. This is on the board. It's got its own dedicated uh, pin port that we can connect to. VCC is pin 3 and is protected by a 1K ohm resistor. Ground is pin 2. Pin 1 is our output. Very easy to connect. And the, uh, the 1K ohm resistor is it's used there because if you, uh, it's limit the, limiting the output current. Imagine this is a transistor switch. When it detects infrared, it drives the voltage low. So the output is normally high, normally 5 volts. And when you, you take a TV remote and you aim it at this thing, it drives the the uh, it drives the 
signal low, so it basically shorts it and shorts the protected 1k uh, current inside. So normally high output, you you press uh, you press any button uh, keep a button on your TV remote, it drives the line low and high depending on when the infrared uh, LED on the remote is blinking. So this is essentially a representation of the the transmitter. So uh, what I'll actually do is I will probe the IR line with my oscilloscope in a few minutes and you'll actually see this and it's pretty neat so I've got my LDR jumper connected this is my LDR right here and I expect that in light in, in when it's well lit the resistance on it will be very low so I'll touch my sense pin 0 0.7 volts as soon as I put a darkness over it it goes up to almost 4 volts so that the resistance becomes much higher. Now here's the neat thing. We're going to be using that with a comparator circuit uh, as one of the first videos, so stay tuned for that and we'll be able to basically turn items on or off depending on how you configure it with dark and light. We're going to use make a light sensor uh, relay toggler. However, if I touch the AC port, I should get very little voltage, yeah, zero volts. So, um, I'm not sure if I'll be able to measure it with the multimeter, but no, and yet, there we go. So, you might be able to pick up the little AC spike uh, with your multimeter, and not likely what you're going to have to use in an oscilloscope. So, I'm actually going to show you that right now. Okay, so I'm going to touch my AC pin with my scope probe. Zero volts. And I have this on, uh, I think, I think uh, 500 millivolts per division. And that's, that's the quick change in light that it's detecting. So if I change the, uh, time for division, what I can do is we might get a better view of what's going on. Anyhow, so that's, that's a signal that we can amplify. It's just a few millivolts. We can amplify that and do lots of neat things with it. Let's look at our microphone. So I've changed the jumper to the MIC, mic jumper, and I'm going to probe my AC line. Hey! Hey! Hello! Hello! So... Hello! 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 Change our voltage per division. It's very low voltage. Hello! Oops! Hello! Hello! That's my voice, right there. Can you see it? Hello! Hello! My name is Patrick! Sorry, my scope probe keeps uh, moving off off of the lines. Anyway, I'm not touching it anymore. And uh, that's microphone. Let's look at the vibration sensor. Now, I made a mistake. Um, it should have been notated in the video. Uh, I reversed logic on the vibration sensor. By default, it is shorting that protected 10k ohm resistor uh, on the sense line to ground. So that's what we see on our sense line. Uh, we see zero volts. And uh, I've got this set to about... 2.5 volts per division, so I'm going to knock on the table. That's what we see on our sense line. Now, if I couple it, if I go, if I connect to our AC coupled, our AC coupled pin, our AC pin, and we get a smaller, smaller voltage much smaller but that's the AC coupled signal there's no DC on there it's the DC is blocked so again I've taken my jumper and I've placed it on the VIB the VIB jumper so now our microphone or our LDR do not have any uh, do not have any impact on my circuit so lastly let's talk about the infrared sensor I'm now connecting my scope to the IR output the infrared sensors output and I've got my remote here so I'm going to aim it at the sensor. Pretty neat, huh? So it's normally high, and it's being driven low when it detects uh, infrared data coming from the transmitter. And there you go. So that's a really neat one. We're going to use that for uh, a lot of a few different projects. So that's. 
the, the, that is all of the onboard sensors that we're gonna that we're that we're gonna talk about. Uh, actually, they are the only onboard sensors: the vibration sensor, the LDR, the microphone, and the IR sensor. Next video, we'll be talking about the PIR sensor and the uh, read switch. Our infrared sensor, vibration sensor, blue, cylinderish, LDR, microphone. The sense pin is labeled down here. And AC pin is right above it, and lower right here is our uh, IR pin. So we just need to connect those, and uh, we can condition them to do whatever we want on this board. Tons and tons and tons of stuff. So now, after after my final video, we'll finally get into making some of these projects that I've been talking about. Thanks for watching.